What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Ultra motherboard. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of Gigabyte's Z690 motherboards. Obviously, depending on the model you have, some of the settings might be different, but overall the menus and the overall look of the BIOS should be pretty much the same. And this BIOS really hasn't changed all that much in the past few generations. So if you had, you know, a Z490 board, the BIOS is still pretty much the same from Gigabyte. This video is brought to you by our friends over at Patriot and their Viper Steel DDR4 memory. With capacities up to 64 gigabytes and speeds up to 4400 megahertz, these kits will be a great addition to your gaming rig. Go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Viper Steel to pick up your kit today. So when we start off here, we do get dropped into easy mode. And easy mode allows you to see a bunch of different things and change a few settings. So over here, we have our information, shows us you know, the motherboard that we have, the BIOS version that we're running, the CPU we have installed and how much memory we have installed. And then moving down, we do have information on our memory. We can see we have uh, two 16 gig DIMMs of crucial DDR5 memory running at 4,800 megahertz. And this is where you can enable or disable your XMP profile. It's super simple. You just click, it's disabled, click, it's enabled. That easy, very easy to do. Down here, we have boot sequence. Now we only have one SATA drive installed on our system, but if we had multiple drives, M.2, whatever, we could you know, rearrange our boot sequence. We could drag or drop our boot sequence down here. Very easy to do. Moving up here, we have some information. So our CPU frequency, memory frequency, CPU temperature, system temperature, CPU voltage, PCH temperature, and VRM temperature, all you know, all in real time. And then we have information on kind of what we have plugged into the motherboard. So SATA drives, we just have one SATA drive uh, right here. And PCIe, we just have our one graphics card. And M.2, we don't have it. We have no M.2 drives installed on this board. Um, just gives you a live view. So maybe you're having a problem with the drive or something's not showing up. You can see if the BIOS is actually detecting it, uh, which is a good thing to see. Here we have Smart Fan 6, which will show you in real time how fast all of your fans are moving. Now we only have one fan connected um, to the motherboard here. But if you click in, what's kind of nice is that you have this really nice, you know, overlay that allows you to really fine tune all of the fan headers on the board. You can do this before you install Windows um, to, you know, set your fan curves, all that kind of stuff that you can do. You can do it right in here and it kind of gives you a more, you know, better than text, I would say, uh, visualization, vis visualization, I can't talk today, uh, but it allows you to kind of see everything and see your fan curve and do all that uh, really easily here. So we can hit escape to get out of there. And then we have some tabs over here. You can change your language. You can get some help. Advanced mode, smart fan six, which we were just in. Load optimized defaults. Q flash, which allows you to easily flash your BIOS. So you download a BIOS image off of the you know off the internet and then you put it on a flash drive and this will allow you to easily flash your bios save and exit and then our favorites menu so let's go into advanced mode again you can click here or just hit f2 on your keyboard and you should be dropped i think for the most part into the tweaker menu but we'll go over to favorites really quick and what's really cool about favorites is any menu item or any setting in the bios you can add to your favorites menu so if there's something that you're changing all of the time you can go ahead and you know put it in this favorites menu so you don't have to go to different pages to do different settings it's all right here very easily on one page which i always like to see now in the tweaker tab this is going to be everything to fine tune your system to do overclocking all that kind of stuff um, under cpu upgrade we have gaming profile and max performance profile these are default profiles that gigabyte has set up um, that you can enable you know but most like i said by default it is set to default cpu base clock enhanced multi-core performance again set to auto um, you can go to performance cpu clock ratio 
Um, and again, you can change that efficiency clock ratio. And this is for all of the cores at once. We'll go to by core in a second. But if you wanted to do like a quick overclock, um, you know, performance CPU clock ratio, you could kind of set that. And most people, if they're doing a quick overclock, they're just overclocking the performance cores, not the efficiency cores. Um, but you can do all of them at once in the, oops, in, let me go back here, in these two settings. So performance CPU clock ratio and efficient CPU clock ratio. Um, you can change all of those at once with these two settings. Ring ratio, IGP ratio, and then going into advanced CPU settings. So in advanced CPU settings, these are you know a lot of the settings that have to do with your CPU, uh, over temperature protection, hyper threading, speed shift, thermal monitor, all that kind of stuff. All the settings that have to do with your CPU are right here. Uh, AVX settings, and then we go to active turbo ratios. So this is where you can change the ratios per core. So by default, it's set to auto. We would change that to manual, and then you can set your per core um, ratios for each core. So each of the performance cores and each of the efficiency cores. Now, if you're this, this looks kind of daunting to you. You can also do this with the Intel, um, what is that, the Intel Extreme tool um, that you can download and you can do it on Windows if this looks a little daunting to you. Um, but like I said, it's all right here. You can go ahead and you know change all of those if you want. And then if you need to disable some cores, if you're doing some like hardcore overclocking and you want to disable the efficiency cores or something like that, um, you can do that as well. So you can pick the number of cores that are enabled you know, with the performance cores and efficiency cores. It's all right in here. And then per core hyper threading disable settings, you can change those as well. Getting out of there, we have some memory settings. So again, if you didn't set your XMP profile on the easy mode, you can do it here. You just you know hit enter or select it, and then you can select disabled or profile one. We of course want profile one. System memory multiplier. Um, if you wanted to overclock your memory a little bit, go above 4800, you could change the speed right there. <clears throat> Advanced memory settings. Um, this is you know a lot of different things to do with your memory. Um, the things that you might want to change right off the bat would be your memory channels timing. So if you wanted to loosen or tighten your timings, if you're doing overclocking, things like that, you can do that right in here. And then you can see your SPD info for your memory, you know, right in there and S SPD setup. Um, so you can actually set user SPD uh, stuff in here you know you can see where it says user 4 user 5 you can kind of do that you know if you wanted to in there and then this is all of your voltages so your v core voltage cpu voltage or cpu v core um all that kind of stuff you know everything to do with voltage is right in here and then you have ddr5 voltage control as well as advanced advanced voltage settings so these are all of your over voltages and then your cpu vrm settings um your load line calibration and again it gives you scaling so it will show you uh what the different levels of load line calibration would do all that kind of stuff and then internal vr uh configuration as well get out of there and that is it for the tweaker menu so basically in the tweaker menu we have cpu stuff so you can enable or disable different cpu settings you can change your performance and efficiency core ratios all at once or by core all of your ddr5 settings as well so enabling xmp profile setting uh your different timings and all of that and then all of your voltages stuff everything to do with voltages on this board is in here as well so you have all that stuff in the tweaker menu moving over to settings uh, platform power um, this is just you know wake by alarm ERP you know anything to do with you know power management is right here IO ports again the, you know like if you want to disable the internal graphics you can do that uh, initial display output you, you know you can set to which slot or the internal graphics if by some reason you don't have a graphics card uh, you can change that as well um, audio controller you know here is app center download and install configuration so by default when you install windows it's gonna you know as soon as windows boots up for the first time it's gonna ask you to download and install uh gigabytes app center and if you don't install it the first time when you restart it's gonna ask you again um 
So unless you install it, it's gonna keep on asking you unless you change this setting. Now, I personally would leave it enabled because the App Center allows you to download all of your drivers at once, as well as all of your you know, motherboard um, companion software. I like that, you know, some people are freaked out by having something automatically install and download. But for me, for most users, I think you should just leave this enabled um, and just makes things so much easier than downloading like seven different files for all your drivers and all that. You could do it all through the App Center. Um, so it's nice that it is, it is enabled by default. USB configuration, just different settings for USB. Network stack configuration. NVMe configuration, we don't have an NVMe drive installed, but if we did, the configuration would be right here. SATA configuration, all the SATA ports we can, you know, control um, all that kind of stuff and disable them and do everything you want with SATA right here. BMD uh, controller, and then the Ethernet controller, which we don't have uh, connected right now. And that is it for your, uh, no, we have miscellaneous. Um, so this is all of your RGB LEDs. There are RGB LEDs on the rear IO cover. Um, that you can turn off and on by default without having to install uh, Gigabyte's RGB software. So you can, you know, this is like the default on or off. You can just turn them on or off. They are on by default. They are not on by default when you power off your system. So a lot of other motherboards, when you power off your system, the RGB lights will still stay on. They're off by default here. Um, and then onboard, you know, LEDs and things like that. In Intel Platform Trust Technology or PTT. This is enabled by default on this BIOS, so you don't have to change anything if you want to install Windows 11. We actually made a whole video on older BIOSes on how to enable Intel PTT to install Windows 11. You don't have to do that. It is enabled by default here. Um, link speeds and then trusted computing. Again, you don't have to set any of this stuff up because it is already set up for Windows 11 um, by default. And then uh, optional search hotkey. Um, Alt F if you want to search through the BIOS and then PC health status um, just gives you, you know, readouts of all of your voltages um, in real time. And that is it for settings. System info basically just gives you your basic info. Again, the motherboard that you're running, BIOS version, BIOS dates, all that kind of stuff is right on here. You can um, sets you can see your plug-in devices info same thing that we saw in the easy mode just kind of in a text form here um and then q flash that allows you to easily flash your bios uh with a flash drive so you have all that in system info under boot uh this is everything to do with boot your boot you know options and all that kind of stuff fast boot you might actually want to change this mouse speed because i feel the mouse is decently slow in this bios so you might want to change that um, Windows 10 features, administrator password, user password, secure boots, all that kind of stuff um, that you can go ahead and set right here. Oops, I'm moving through the settings. But, um, but yeah, that's everything to do with boot really is right here. And then finally we have save and exit. So we can save, um, you know, in exit by saving our settings, exit without saving, load optimized defaults, which I always like to see because I mess up settings in the BIOS all the time and then I forget what I changed and I don't know where that setting is. I can just load the optimized defaults and kind of go back to the base BIOS. And then boot override, of course, is great as well. So, you know, if you're installing Windows from a flash drive, which you should be, you do have the boot override here. So that allows you um, to boot from that flash drive first. And then when the system restarts, you don't have to worry about pulling the drive out. It will boot to your normal hard drive. Um, so you have all of that in this BIOS. Like I said, the Gigabyte BIOS really hasn't changed all that much. It's been the same. Easy mode has been the same um, for quite a while now. So nothing really jumps out to me in this BIOS. It works really well. Everything is pretty much easy to find. Um, you shouldn't have, you know, run into issues trying to find a setting or anything like that. Now, if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.